in this video, um, I do part one of many complex integrals that I'll do. So these are integrals of a complex variable, and they're really cool. And um, additionally, I really, really love complex analysis. So I'll make a lot of other videos on complex analysis and try to exhaust the whole subject at some point. Um, additionally, um, I have, did I say additionally again? Whatever. Um, last but not least, <laughs> I guess, um, I have made a video that's very similar to this one in uh, my video series titled Fun Challenging Integrals. In that video series, I solve the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared over x to the fourth plus one dx. The mechanics and the steps and the details of that solution are very, very similar to this solution. And therefore, if I skip any details here and you're not happy with that, then I'll link that video below this so that you can uh, fill in the details by watching that other video. Yeah? Cool. All right. Let's get started. So to start, as I explained that other video, uh, we could rewrite our integral here uh, to be negative infinity to infinity of 1 over z to the fourth plus 1 dz. Um, and so that is we switched from x to z and so from real to complex variables. And I justify why we do this in that other video, so check that out if you're not um, you know, convinced of why you can do this. All right, cool. Um, then um, we want to use the residue theorem of complex analysis, so somehow we need to uh, involve this integral into one, one that has a, a closed contour. So we're gonna do that this way, which is using uh, the real axis on the complex plane from negative r to r, so using the line segment from negative r to r and a semicircular arc uh, of radius r, which we call CR, then we can um, have a, a closed contour um, that uh, then will allow us to use the residue theorem. So we write that the integral over this closed contour of f of z, and of course by f of z, I mean and let me uh, use my space efficiently. So by f of z, I mean 1 over z to the fourth plus 1, yeah? All right, so we can write that, that the integral of f of z dz over the closed contour here is equal to the integral from negative r to r. Eh. Sorry, I didn't like that integral sign. The integral from negative r to r um, of f of z plus the integral over the semicircular arc CR of f of z. And that's surely true, right? Close contour is first the line segment and then the semicircular arc, right? Cool. And what we're going to do is take the limit as r goes to infinity. And when we do that, uh, you will find invariably that this second integral over the um, semicircular arc is going to go to zero. Now, I justify that in great detail in that other video, which I'll link below this. So check that out. And the steps are very, and the argument is very similar uh, for this one um, when when you've checked out that other one. So yeah, you'll see once you see that other video how to argue in this video that the integral over CR is going to go to zero. Cool. So because of that, I could just get rid of this right now because I'm not going to justify it with details here. Cool. So then. We could just concern ourselves with finding this integral here, because that integral, as you'll see, is not going to be uh, dependent on r. And so when I write lim as r goes to infinity here, and then here, um, we're just going to get the same thing on the left side. Um, so I could just have the lim as r goes to infinity on the right side. And once I do that, you see that um, the integral we're seeking, this, is just that. Yeah. All right, so let's just figure out what this will have to be. Well, by the residue theorem, we know that the integral over a closed contour of a certain function, f of z, is going to be 2 pi i times the sum uh, from j equals 1 to n of aj, where aj um, is the residue of the function f of z at the singularity zj. Okay, cool. Now, uh, this will mean that we need to find our singularities. So first, let me uh, move these guys up. So this guy here, and this guy here, yeah? And um, 
we will have two singularities and therefore two residues. So we'll have A1 and A2. Um, so we're going to need A1 plus A2 for this part, right? Um, but we also have to multiply by 2 pi i once we add uh, the residues. Um, so notice that n is going to be 2 is what I'm saying. Yeah? Okay, and let me divide this up here. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So uh, let's find the residues one at a time. But before we f actually, we can find them in tandem. But first, let's find our um, singularities. Our singularities are um, going to be where the denominator of our function f of z is going to be 0. Well, that will mean we need to know where z to the fourth plus 1 is equal to 0. Um, again, I do give you a little bit more detail in that other video, but um, you should know how to do this. And um, z to the fourth plus 1 will equal 0 if z equals e to the um, um, pi over 4 plus um, pi over 2n all times i for n equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, so we're saying this has four singularities, but we're only interested in two of them corresponding to n equals 0 and n equals 1 because those are the only ones that will be enclosed by our contour. Yeah? Cool. So we have z1 equaling e to the i times pi over 4, and then we'll have z2 equaling e to the i times 3 pi over 4. Those are the two singularities of interest here. And again, that's because those are the only ones that our contour encloses. Cool. Um, all right. So for these two uh, zjs, right, we need to find their corresponding, um, uh, sorry, we need to find their corresponding residues. And while there are different techniques for finding residues, uh, for the specific case where you have a rational function, um, f of z, uh, you know, which we can call n of z over d of z. Um, if it's so that um, the degree of uh, d of z minus the degree of n of z is greater or equal to 2, then you could do the following, which is, uh, which is that the residue, well, I could just say aj, because that's a residue. So the residue at uh, zj is simply going to be um, n of um, zj divided by uh, d prime of zj. In this specific case, again, where the degree of um, uh, the degree of d is uh, minus the degree of n is greater or equal to two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And of course, you also need to have a rational function. All right. So we're going to use this to uh, calculate the residues. Um, is what I'm telling you. All right, so let's, uh, I guess, write that right there or put it right there so we can reference it. But these guys, you know, we could just take mental note. All right. Now, um, so then that would mean um, A1 plus A2, and I'd already written them, so let's slide it down. So A1 plus A2 is going to equal, um, it's going to equal, um, well, notice that um, uh, n of z divided by d prime of z is going to say um, 1 over um, 4 z cubed, right? This is will have to be true for that, right? Okay, so then uh, we'll have a1 plus a2 is, uh, well, I could get rid of this. Um, it's going to be 1 over 4 uh, times z1 cubed plus... 1 over 4 times z2 cubed. And notice that I could just factor out a 1 fourth, and I'll, I'm going to do that. And then we'll have 1 over 4 times um, 1 over z1 cubed, but that's going to say 1 over z1 is right here. So 1 over z1 cubed is going to say 1 over e to the um, i times 3 pi over 4, right? After we cube it. That's tiny writing, but I hope you can see. I think you can see. Plus um, 1 over, and then it's going to be e to the um, i times 9 pi over 4. Okay, cool. Now, we don't just add the residues. We have to also multiply them by uh, 2 pi i, right? Right here? Yeah? Okay. Right here? Okay, so since we have to multiply the sum of the residues by 2 pi i, let's do that right now. 
Well, so that'd mean 2 pi i in front of here, and that'd mean 2 pi i over here. And when we do that, we're going to get, well, this 2 here is going to cancel that 4 and turn it into a 2. And then we'll have the pi, um, but then we also will have, well, so we could just put the pi right here. So pi over 2, and so get rid of the pi. But then remember, um, multiplying by i is um, same thing as rotating by um, 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees um, counterclockwise. And so to see that first, let's rewrite this uh, with the exponent in the numerator. So it's 1 over e to the i times 3 pi over 4, which we can write as 1, well, not 1 over. We're putting it upstairs. So e to the negative i times 3 pi over 4. Um, and then similarly, we can write this fella as e to the negative 9 um, pi over 4 times i. So e to the negative uh, 9 uh, pi over 4 times i. And now, multiplying by i there, again, we could just think of as rotating by 90 degrees. And so we'll have the following, which is pi over 2, that's this here, um, times, after we rotate by 90 degrees, that is multiplied by i, over here, we're going to get e to the, uh, it's going to be negative um, pi over 4 times i, and then plus, over here, we're going to get e to the negative 7 pi over 4 times i. Cool. All right. We're almost done. <laughs> now what we have to do is first make space and then um, slide this over here and uh, work on what's inside of the parentheses. And then we'll know how to multiply by pi over 2. So let's just work on what's inside the parentheses. So take mental note. We have to multiply by pi over 2. But I'm going to get rid of it for now. And so that we have a quality and not a mathematical run on that's incorrect. Um, so here equals, um, and then we're going to have cosine of negative pi over four. And cosine of negative pi over four is just cosine of pi over four. So we could just write that cosine of pi over four uh, plus i times sine of negative pi over four. And um, of course, now using the interpretation that e to the i theta is cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta, right? And um, now sine of negative pi over 4 is same as negative sine of pi over 4 because sine is even. Uh, sorry, sine is odd. And that's um, why I turned the cosine into a positive pi over 4 because cosine is even. Sine is odd, but you know that, you know that. All right, um, so I could just write minus i times sine of pi over 4. And then plus we'll have cosine of negative 7 pi over 4. But notice cosine of negative 7 pi over 4 is same as cosine of positive pi over 4. So I could just write that, cosine of pi over 4. And then uh, plus, and then it's going to be i times um, sine of negative 7 pi over 4. But sine of negative 7 pi over 4 is same as sine of pi over 4. So we have i times sine of pi over 4. And good things happen. Specifically, boom, boom. So we just have that this equals cosine of pi over 4 plus cosine of pi over 4, or just 2 times cosine of pi over 4, uh, which equals, which equals um, 2 times root 2 over 2, because root 2 over 2 is what cosine of um, pi over 4 is, yeah? But then, remember, we had a pi over 2 right here. And so then, all we have left to do is multiply this by pi over 2. And when we do, we will have 2 times root 2 over 2 times pi over 2. And then we could do the following. Boom, boom. So we just have pi times root 2 over 2, our final answer. So our final answer, which I'll write bigger, 
is pi times root 2 all over 2. Now, I don't know if I've said this, but if your question is to go from 0 to infinity, notice that because this function is even, it's just half of our answer. Our answer is from negative infinity to infinity. But because our function f of z is even, um, if you were looking to do from 0 to infinity, you will just have to take half of this answer. Um, and that's that. That's my final note, yeah? I hope you enjoyed this, and take care.